and <laughs> I co-host the USF Blazers with Piero, and I'm also on the Leonardo board, and that's the L in the laser thing, is Leonardo Art and Science Evening Rendezvous for laser, and Leonardo, as most of you guys know, is uh, the International Organization for Art, Science, and Technology. We publish journals out of MIT, both for music and for art, and post lots of lasers, lots of places, so you can see these things uh, flashing by. This is some of the places where we now have lasers going in the U.S., but also all starting to spread various other places in the world, so we have Canada, England, and we're going to be starting in Germany. Um, and there's various ones that are going to be happening soon in the Bay Area, so I thought I would point those out to you. You can see them as they flash by there. And if you want more information, you can go on to either the Leonardo site or Piero's site and see what's coming up for the lasers that are coming up very soon. Um, so the program, as I'll just say what Piero says, does not have uh, necessarily a theme to it, though. Uh, Often people make connections from talk to talk, but there's no intention to have a thematic for the whole evening. Um, and so it can be incredibly variable, which is part of the charm of the laser, I think. Um, so we'll also have in the intermission after the first two talks uh, an opportunity once we get back together before the last talks. Um, for people to get up and have 30 seconds if they have an event or something that they want to announce or they just want to say what they do and want to network with other people, you're welcome to do that at that point. Okay? And of course, afterwards and during the intuition, you should feel free to speak to the speakers. Um, I'm also a professor here at USF. I teach chemistry and organic chemistry. I teach, I teach organic chemistry. I'm a physical organic chemist. Okay, so our first speaker performer, I guess, is Diane, I know it says, Diane Lopez del, si del Silva. And uh, I'll do what Carol does. I'll give an incredibly, incredibly brief introduction <coughs> and I'll let them introduce themselves. Okay, so he usually gives about one sentence. I'll try and give maybe two. Uh, she's going to speak on dance, technology, and science at Kinetech Arts. And um, she's a dancer, choreographer, and the artistic director of Kinetech Arts. So we'll get her going here. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Uh, thank you, Tammy, and thank you, Piero, for having us here. Uh, it's a real pr pleasure. Um, so um, she already introduced me. So I'm a dancer, choreographer, and artistic director of Kinetech Arts. Uh, we founded Kinetech Arts in January of 2013. Uh, we started only with a lab. So it was an open platform for dancers, scientists, technologists to get together and just explore, play with interactive technology, have interesting conversations. And we realized that the lab was going really well and there were a lot of interests. So we decided that we wanted to have our company. So um, it's been about two years now that we have Kinetech Arts. We are a group of dancers, scientists, and technologists visual artists, um, and we create performances. We are interested in intersecting movement, dance, and technology. Um, what do I want to say? I wanted to show you, I wanted to start by showing you a little 30 second reel of Kinetech Art, so you have a little taste of things that we do. Of course, videos never make justice of a live performance, but at least it gives you an idea uh, of what we have been doing the past two years.
So today um, I'm going to talk more uh, from an artist perspective. I'm not a technologist. That's why I have my hubby to take care of the computer there. And that's how it is in the studio. He always takes care of the machines. And I always take care of the bodies. So I'm not a tech savvy. I'm also not a scientist. Uh, however, I studied psychology at San Francisco State University. Uh, so today is more as, a, as an artist. How do I see the scientific concepts and how I integrate technology and science into our performances? So we have, uh, specifically today, I'm going to talk to you about two concepts that we have been ex uh, experimenting with at Kinotech Arts. And the first one is Markov chain. And Markov chain is a random process used for speech recognition, online shopping behavior, and weather modeling. So speech recognition would be something like instead of doing a text with your fingers, you just talk and send a text. It's the Markov chain behind that. And, uh, or you can also talk to Siri and ask, what is Markov chain? <laughs> and uh, also online shopping behavioral. So you know the cookies that are coming to the computer, they know your patterns. They know, oh, Diane really likes boots. Let me throw in some cookies for her, and you know they, they know my pattern. They know what I like, and also weather modeling, like San Francisco. Um, can I get to the next? Yeah. Um, so um, Markov chain has to do with probabilities. And for example, uh, San Francisco. What's the probability of San Francisco being sunny tomorrow? Or what's the probability of San Francisco being uh, foggy tomorrow? We all know that San Francisco is usually foggy. So we know that tomorrow, there's probably a 90% chance of San Francisco being foggy instead of being sunny. And uh, can I have the next slide? And you can see here, uh, Markov chain is a memoryless uh, process. So it doesn't really matter what it happens, what it happened yesterday. It matters what it happens in the present. And the present is what is going to predict the future. As this guy says better, my life is a Markov chain. Given the present, the future does not depend on the past. And as a, psych as a student of psychology, for me, that doesn't make any sense. I'm still trying to kind of wrap my brain around this concept, because in psychology, yeah, the past is very important. It, it, it really shows your, your behavior and your patterns is all related to the past. Um, can I have the next slide? Uh, so we have, I'm going to show you like three experiments that I've done with Kinetech, with, well, two experiments with Kinetech Arts and one experiment with Robert Moses Kinda's company. Um, let me show you the first one, which we call the Huggable Chaos. And this, we, we did that in one of our parties. So we use our labs to experiment with ideas. And then I bring them into the studio to create choreography. Oh, actually, can we stop that for a second? Oh, let, let it go, let it go. I'll say, I'll say something later. So they have, there are two, they, uh, we paired them up. And one person has a cell phone. I oh, can't hear you. OK, no, stop. OK, um, you can just let it play, and I will tell later. Stop now. So this is a very fun experiment we've, we've been doing, and it's just, it's mainly people go to a website, and then they have tasks, they have states that they go through, and one person is giving the instructions, and the other person is following the instructions. So when we play with the audience, we actually we usually give them very simple uh, tasks that everybody can follow, such as walking or hugging, talking to the audience. Uh, this is the website that they go, and this was designed by Raymond Larray, this man here, multi-talent person, visual artist. 
web designer of Kinetech Arts. And he designed this website that gives people the tasks of things that they, they have to do. And here are the transition probabilities. So we can change the probabilities here. What's the probability of myself talking or running or kissing or following? So we can change the probabilities and, and we can change the probabilities and create a completely <coughs> different energy in the room. So I can have, okay, I really want everybody to be kissing. So everybody's gonna be kissing. And also what interests me about this program is that the, it really breaks the patterns of things too. So let's say I am um, talking, I go here and I'm like talking to the audience, right? I'm talking to this lady here. And then the person that's giving me the stretch and say, hi, my name is Diane, nice to meet you, how are you doing? And the person come here and say, run. And then I stop the conversation <laughs> and, I stop, and I start running. And, uh, and then she says, hug. And then she goes somewhere else and then hug. So it's very dynamic to me. And I envision that um, in the future to have drawings on the floor that people can actually follow. So you can actually see the patterns. Here is, it's quite chaotic. You can't really see that much, but there are actually a lot of patterns happening when they're moving on space. Baby, stop. There's a question there. Yeah, they see the instructions in the cell phone. Yeah. Um, we can go to next, I think. Okay, stop. stop. So uh, this is a choreography I did for Robert Moses King Dance Company. Uh, and this time I decided to use visual cues for the dancers to know what, what tasks they have to follow. And so they have each square has a different color. And, when they, and they, each dancer is following uh, uh, one specific square. And each color is telling them what to do. So they had also simple tasks like walking and balancing and uh, circular movements. And then, but then the, the question was raised of what happens in between states? And then we decided that in between states they were gonna take the clothes off or put the clothes on. But then the transition actually became the featured state. And it was, we, every night we, we did many different tasks, like jumping, turning, eating, uh, smelling these interesting things. And uh, so every night was different. And it was very, very difficult for the dancers. Because first, it's very, it sounds very simple, but it's very difficult for the dancers to actually shift stage, stage from one stage to another. And because they're always like the remaining of the past, but I don't want them to worry about the past. It's a memoryless process. So they have to, to be super fast and super aware. They have to be looking at the screen. They have to, okay, next task. And they just go right away without thinking of what they're doing now. And because they have to be looking at the screen in the back and in the front, and there are a lot of things happening on stage, it was very difficult for them to be aware of the space and not be bumping on each other because suddenly they'll be like turning and then someone coming this, in this direction. And, so it was very challenging for them. They were very anxious and very frustrated. But it, it was really fun to experiment with that, uh, with them. Um, uh, we go next. Yeah, I know. So another concept we have been exploring at Kinetech Arts is fractals. 
A fractal is a natural phenomenon, a pattern in nature that repeats itself in different scales. Example, coastline, van, veins, clouds, mountains, ocean lungs, trees, lightning, <coughs> seashells, etc. Um, can I have the next one? Um, so I, there was something very interesting that I was not, I wasn't really thinking about fractals at all. But I was making this choreography about, uh, about anxiety and frustration and anger after the death of my father. And, but I was also kind of like introduced to the idea of fractals. And I was not really researching about it. But I was, I was looking at images. And really got to me their, the beauty of fractals. Um, so I was, while I was creating that choreography, somehow the ideas of fractals start coming to that work. And I just thought it was very interesting. I didn't ask for it. It just kind of like knocked the door and said, hey, I'm coming in. And so when I think of fractals, I think of a lot of different things. I think of uh, silence. I think of patterns. I think of repetition. I think of um, spirals. Um, it's also a spiritual experience because it's this repetitive rhythm that uh, is very spiritual to me. Uh, so let me just show them the very first. Um. I have a surprise for you. the sounds that you hear in the solo. So this is my music throughout the whole solo. I have this on stage and I move this around, I play with this. This was, it sounds, for me, it sounds like fractals. <laughs> it's like this repetition, it's white noise, but it, for me that's what it means, fractals in terms of, no, of sound. And so I had this on stage and of course you saw already what it is. I was gonna surprise you, but it's just um, electronic bugs. So this is like a little wood box and I just put the, the, this little guys here. And just their vibration, vibration will create the sound. And I think the sound, the sound is, um, is very, it's quite annoying. <laughs> But I think it's very interesting because that's, that's actually the feeling that I had when my father passed away. I was really frustrated and I was annoyed. It was like a buzzing in my life for a long time. And I thought that this sound really represented what I was feeling. Um, and also we, used, we also used a little bit of uh, projection of fractals on the white canvas. And that was like a symbol of you know, cracking the floor uh, opening the floor for the body to go under, and the bugs really symbol symbolizes death to me, deterioration. Uh, we can move on. Oh, I have really, sh I don't have time for that one. Yeah, so, uh, well, we can play for 30 seconds. When I was at Marine Headland Center for the Arts, uh, that's when I really started researching fractals, and I was, uh, study Mandelbrot and trying to understand the math and I'm not a math person and I was like this is not working for me so I went I did what I was supposed to do I wanted to have a, a kinesthetic experience I want to have a sensorial experience so I went I went on hikes and I would just what does it what does it feel like to embody fractals 
what does it feel in my what does it feel like in my body not what is the equation but what is what does it feel in my in my body so I was just like improvising and like experiencing that in my body in the beginning very beginning of the the process uh, we can play this one for 30 seconds <laughs> this is a film that I made when I was a head lens had this idea of the emergency blanket, also kind of the same idea of the bugs, using the emergency blanket to make the replicate the sound of ocean and and wind, and I use this swing for me like a representation of time. That's when I think it really, for me, it, it was a, a spiritual experience to repeat the same movement over and over and over and over for a long, long time until the movement gets transformed into something else. But without trying to compose it with my brain, but more with what is my body asking to do when I repeat this movement for so, so long. We can move on to the next. I know this is very short, but I will need to show it a little bit. I'm actually going to be performing the solo at uh, the Young Museum on October 17th for the 10 year, 10 year anniversary um, inside of the Dome. It's a free event, so please come. And last thing I want to show you is this beautiful technology that Wei Dong created for me. I wanted to measure stillness. I practiced a lot of stillness when I was a headlands. And I asked him, how can I measure stillness? And he created this amazing thing for me that I just step on top of it. It's guided by fractal noise. And I played with it for a long time. I have, I'm kind of out of practice, but I can show you more or less how it works. So I step on it. it it has all to do with how I move my weight on top of the board. And so there on the top, you see the menu, and I have the colors. I can choose the colors. There is a black thing around the color, and that's the color that I'm choosing. And if, I'm, if I move my weight to the side, I can change, I can change the color. Let's choose red. And if I drop the weight on my heels, I choose the color. And then, sorry, this is my timing. And I can move my weight from right to left, back. And this very interesting thing about this technology is that it's not very, it's just a spontaneous uh, communication between my body and the technology. I can't really, I can't really predict what's going to happen. I can kind of know more or less how it's going to go, but it's never how I have it in my mind. And sometimes it's really fast decision making with the technology. And I can step back, and I erase it, and I come forward. And so what I, I started with just standing still. I closed my eyes and just practiced Tai Chi exercise and just stay there for a long, long, long time and just open my eyes and see what I created. Of course, there's no such thing as stillness, right? Even when you're meditating, like, the thoughts are passing by. It's just awareness of what's happening, right? And there's no way, I mean, what is, what is standing? Standing is just you're, you're constantly using your refle reflexes to, to stay standing. Otherwise, you'll just fall, right? Standing is just you trying to not to fall. <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's what I we've been doing for the past two years, just playing around. Uh, does anyone want to try? <coughs> yeah. Come. Later. Okay. All right. Later. I'll hang out. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. <laughs>
there be potentially a discernible difference in the, the representation? I mean, someone who's a, you know, a master can make it like a couple of ripples or something. Oh, you mean in terms of design? Yeah, the design. Yeah, it. so that's, that's the trickiest thing about this technology is that I tried so many different things. One of the things were to be super, super, super slow and really design the painting, choose the colors. We had a painter coming to Headlands and you know deciding on the colors and choosing like the design and everything. And it was really, really hard to make it happen, but we made it happen. And, um, and another option was also to just move my body as I wished and see, oh, okay, this is what happened. But so it's being, there is, there is this tension of, if I wanna create something really well designed and it has to be super slow movement. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd be really cool if you could have, I don't, I, I don't have any opinion one way or the other about Fitbit, but if you have a Fitbit where you could kind of be wearing, are you doing Fitbit device? If you had something like that, maybe you could play with it. That's a good idea, we should try that. Yeah. You should come to our lab and come play with us. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Could you say a little word about the technology itself that you use? Sorry, I'm a little bit down. I, I say, could you say a word about the technology itself? What do you use to, to oh. communicate with the screen itself? Oh, that, the, specifically yeah, this the one? The program that you're, uh, what, what's the medium that you're using? Oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> this is a, a Wii board. It's from the video game. So we use the Wii board from, the board from the game, the video uh -huh. game, connected to the computer. Oh, nice. okay. Yeah. Any other I forgot questions? to show it. Okay, well you can speak more with Aya yeah, yeah. during the break. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.